And we're back, everybody, for our halftime show for our first series of the day. We got Rafa back on the cast with us, coming in from the sidelines. First off, uh, thoughts on the match, Rafa? What a banger. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I, I know we, we have to stay away from, you know, using that word over and over and over again. Otherwise, it becomes overused. But, I mean, this is what NACL is all about. Going mm -hmm. all the way to the later stages of the game, past 40 minutes. I know even on path to LCS, there is another 40-minute just absolute... Uh, I think Desrex uses the word uh, slobber knocker or slobber knocker. Yeah, I think medic. Knocker. Let's give let's give credit. Right there. I think medic was the first one to oh. use that. But yes, apologies, medic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean this is this is why I love NACL because you you just go into the late game and everyone just starts flexing their their mechanics right mm -hmm. and just seeing how far you can push limits. So uh, and. Honestly, heartbreaking for FlyFam because they had a really solid composition built around which I think a lot of us early on in the season was hyping up the strength to be Instinct, someone who, as you were talking about during the cast, has that uh, LCS experience. Even during his debut week with TSM, racked up a pentakill on this area as well. I loved to see that they doubled down on that from mm -hmm. yesterday because that was the focus yesterday today we could tell goo even though he went for the gank top lane first because you know bottom he was pathing bot didn't quite work out still got the gank top went right back bot <laughs> just kept focusing on instinct in the early game getting him to that comfortable position and like we said at the very end there the dragon steal you could tell fly fam were like all right we got the dragon then let's get out of here they weren't ready for the fight at that moment because instinct didn't have the mana um Almost, almost was able to carry that one, yeah. but it, maybe next yeah. time. It was, it was a really cool game. I love seeing what some of these players have, and it's interesting. Again, we got to compare the expectations, right? For all the challengers team, like wins are nice, but realistically, your goal is to be promoted, and one way yeah. to do that is by winning. But you also can just get better. Whereas all of these uh, teams coming in from the provisional side, they they actually care about wins a whole lot more, so that they can continue playing in the next split. And so. That's a bit of a heartbreak for all the Fly uh, fam fans out at home because that's one that felt like they should have had. It was this close in order to going into their favor. Uh, but as we get ready for the next game, Rafa, I hear you prepared uh, so, some entertainment for us here on the desk. Uh, while we wait for the players to load in, obviously it, it's up to them. They, they have a couple minutes between games to refresh. So while we're waiting for them to get a pick and ban, what you got for us? All right, so I'm coming at you with a... Uh, halftime show segment that we're going to call Based or Misplaced. Now, ba -ba -bum. During this entire uh, first game, I've been lurking in Twitch chat, occasionally chiming in. Oh! Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I also was scouting Twitter. Honestly, there there wasn't many Twitter takes that seemed juicy enough for us to to really pull the debates from. I, I got a couple, but I was mostly just popping in Twitch chat, seeing like, okay, who's who's got some like very very vocal messages about the game, right? And mm -hmm. so the idea, I'm gonna share those takes with you, or I'm gonna read them on stream because I cannot. I don't have the technical capabilities of putting them on stream, but I'm going to read them to you and who said them. And then sure. you two are going to debate whether this take was based or if it was misplaced. And you'll have to okay, defend it okay. or you have to you know, say why. Now, I've got a recommendation, I mean, Mark. So you're sure. going to read out the take and then after we give our answers, then you tell us who they are. Oh, yes, I think I think that's better. I think that's better because I, I will absolutely be influenced <laughs> depending on whose take it is. Uh, also, we got about two minutes for it. So, uh, oh, okay. no. well, let, let's go. Let's, let's get go. in. All right. Um, uh, let's do uh, this. Let's do this. Uncharacter uncharacteristically underwhelming game for Meech, and I don't like his build either. His current build can't damage Renekton, and the team comp is poorly constructed to play front to back. I mean, mm. look, I'm going to go with based because that's the good one. But like that, that just felt like a fact, right? Like Meech did not play this game super, super well. He was mostly just there a lot of the time. And I agree, you're not going to be killing the Maokai nor the Renekton with a collector. You got to get something a little bit faster. He went for the Serrated Dirk early, which kind of forced his hand a little bit. But mm -hmm. I've seen so many players just sit on the Serrated Dirk and eventually sell it. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, now that you say that, I think I might change. Because originally, I was going to say slightly misplaced. I was kind of in between. But 
Because it felt like he knew what he wanted to do, but then they just got punished for hard pushing the bot lane, which honestly I think kind of plays into the statement anyway. So I'll, I'll go with based. Since it's a binary, we have to choose one or the other. I'm on Joshi's side here, based. Okay. Uh, well, that was from uh, Maniac Oaks in the Twitch chat. So. Oh, Maniac. <laughs> All right. Maniac With has a lot of base takes. Base take. Yeah. Maniac <laughs> Oaks has so many be. takes. Some of them are base. Some of them are plays. But this one, this one was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, we got another quick one. Weird seeing so much Renekton with how weak he feels to play solo right now. Hmm. Oh, I was going to say uh, misplaced until the last part of that, right? It is a mm. thing where, like, trying to play Renekton in solo queue is much more difficult than it is in, to play in the professional scene, and so I think I'm going to have to go based as well. You don't want to play a ton of Renekton in solo queue because it relies so much on setting up things with your stun that are impossible to actually like, coordinate on your own. I'm going to say misplaced because as a hard stuck gold player, I feel like Renekton is very easy to steamroll with in my elo, so... Uh, that is my bias, of course. Okay, uh, okay. Whose who take was it? Whose take uh, was it, Robin? This was from uh, Chatter Camp Sada, I think. Uh, I'm hoping I'm saying that name correctly. Um, okay. Just full send it. Yeah. Let, let's see <laughs> if we right. can get two more quick ones in here. Let's okay. get we, let, one more quick one. I can only give you one. One more quick one? Okay. Yeah, we can't uh, leave the players waiting. This aggression from FlyFam and Goo is such a massive upgrade just from yesterday, and I love it. Based! 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 Based. Absolutely. So good. Absolutely based. All right. Thank you, Rafa, for coming on with the uh, based or misplaced game. We're going to bid farewell to Rafa again. Or Before rather, not farewell. Till later. Yes. Mad Magical. So. Let's go. Mad Magical. magical. Let's go. Let's oh, go. wait. Misplaced then. Misplaced. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Say, see you later, Rafa. We're going to hop into pick and ban now. Just Bye. me and Joshi to get ready for the next game. Fly fam, we have to say, even though it's Mad Magical's take, it was very base. They look so much better in that game than yesterday. Yeah, honestly, even though it was a loss, still very impressed with a lot of things that we saw coming up from FlyFam, right? Again, when I look at players like Lunasia, I think back to players like Vital, who came in last uh, split, and, you know, they, they did their best, but it was definitely a spot where most of the time, if we aren't familiar with players, they're not going to be doing particularly well. But Lunasia fighting Fake God to a standstill on Jax yesterday, and then standing his ground on the Renekton, and going even for the most part in a brutal counter matchup, mm -hmm. I have to say, I'm way more impressed with this player than I was expecting to be going into the season. So, the the biggest thing for that is the caliber of laners. You heard Fake God and Jenkins, two players that have had uh, long tenures in North American League of Legends, whether it's through the academy system, even both of them having LCS experience. So, Lunasia turning some heads here already yeah. in that first weekend, which is kind of crazy considering the player's 0-3 right now. But it's not always about the win record. It's about how good you look in the games. Still oh. Lucian first pick for CLG Challenges, but we get the Heimerdinger, baby! I'm ready for it. <laughs> All right. This is a really strong composition already coming out from Sword and Goo, but it is not the easiest thing in the world to pilot. The thing about this combination yep. is every time CLG Challengers walks into a bush, there's like a 30% chance that someone is just dead, right? Just straight up, just gone. You walk into mm. a turret, you walk into a sapling, and suddenly you don't have any HP left. And it gives you so much engage potential between the Maokai, the Varus, and even the long-range grenade. I really like what we're seeing coming out from FlyFam. The big mm. thing is, can they recreate a lot of their laning success like they had in Game 1? Yeah, it's a very different look. This is a completely different style of bot lane for Instinct and Sword to pilot this time around. Doesn't mean that it won't be, you know, a high chance of success. It just means now we get to see a pivot. I, this is more like what I've been seeing I'll, played a lot of the LEC. I've been watching some of those games. It's all about the ranged bot laners uh, from the AD carry and the support combination. Yeah. These things can set each other up so well. And I think that Instinct and Sword are actually be focused more on fighting early yeah. now rather than yeah. just surviving. And Steve, we got to ask the question, how many games in a row did you play of Heimerdinger this offseason? Uh, something like 37. <laughs> I think I played 37 games of Heimerdinger in a row when I was trying to, to hit plat right at season end. 
you know, most of the time, most of the time, we're supposed to look at the color caps or, you know, a little bit more the deeper inside. But we're going to be turning to you quite a bit for all the uh, Heimerdinger expertise that we got <laughs> going on today. Because yeah. it is going to be a spot where I think they have a lot of opportunity to really punish this lane if they're feeling up to the task. And I got to say, Instant and Sword, they should be feeling hot. There's only a few champions that I feel confident given analytical, uh, you know, breakdowns of. And also, Heimerdinger, we've just seen a lot of tape of because he sure. has been played even back in Worlds. He's been very prevalent in the meta. And the biggest thing, like you were saying, is a combination with the Maokai. They can control so much space. Even Sejuani, who's very tanky, it's going to be really painful to walk into some of these brushes. Uh, yep. And it's back to Renekton here for Lunasia. Even with only mid lane bans coming out, if it's not Jax, it looks like this is the blind pick for him. Yeah, I mean, makes sense. The champion is very strong. You got a good early game. You got a good lane. You are able to really have... We got a Warwick. We got a... <sighs> we got... Wait, is it Jenkins Warwick or is it it's Kevin Bobby Warwick Jay's... with Sejuani top lane? I, I'm very confident this is Bobby J's Warwick. Uh, oh, let's go. Bob I'm in. Jenkins coming through. I'm in. He... He's got these absolutely crazy counter picks. I haven't seen Kled in forever. I haven't seen Warwick top in anything outside of my solo queue games, right? You do not see this on the, any kind of competitive stage. And the big thing here is it is so difficult to actually play up against. It is even doing the ghost barrier, man. He's not going to have oh. teleport anywhere on the map, but it is so hard to play this lane too. There's so much sustain, so much early power going into Warwick. But the thing is, if Lunasia plays this lane for a draw, he will be able to participate later on in some of these team fights. True. But there's still just always a suppression on the other team that you suddenly have to worry about. The, okay, this has been a treat of a weekend already. We got already. Moose Hater piloting Garen top lane. We're getting Jenkins Warwick top lane. I don't know what's going on past the LCS Twitch right now, but this is the Twitch channel that you want to be on because this is where the spicy picks are, apparently. I'm okay. I thought we had so, a stale meta, Kangas. Huh? I thought we had a stale meta. Now we get all these crazy things. We get Garen, we get Warwick. I right? didn't realize we were going back into my gold solo queue games, but yeah, let's no, no, go no. back. Go ahead. We got a stale meta uh, for, you know, professional leagues. Semi-pro is where the entertainment is, Josh. <laughs> all You've right. Well, this. We, we do know this. That's why you always watch the college basketball games. Setting expectations real quick. <laughs> there is a lot of range coming up from FlyFam, and they have the same strong front line that they had in yes. Game 1 to play with this time. And you're seeing double arcing comment from the bottom lane. Instinct and Sword are trying to play this game very non-interactively. They're just going to be throwing out a lot of spells from great range. And... The onus of actually making things happen this game is going to be on CLG Challengers. And we'll see if they can mm. actually do that into a Maokai Ultimate, into the Grenade, into the Chain of Corruption, and the wall that Blaze is just able to put up. I'm actually happy that you mentioned that. The range advantage for FlyFam, they have so much range. It is absurd. And CLG have none, right? They're working with Lucian as their longest range mm -hmm. champion. And then a little ranged engage between Kevy and Jenkins. Yeah. But if they get poked out, they're going to have a really rough time. I want to break down something here, though. This yeah. is my moment. The Heimerdinger level one. Going for the turrets in lane. Interestingly enough, this is not how it has been explained to me by high-level Heimerdingers to play. Typically, you want to put the turret right up next to the wall so it doesn't hit the minions. True. That way, you're just controlling the brush and not hard pushing early. Um, but it, you can do this if you're trying to push for level two and go for an all-in. So this signals they want to break the, the waves quickly, they want to hit level two, and they want to try and kill Meech and Breezy. Ooh, look at Jenkins. He's got that dog in him. Yeah. Oh, he's going for the, the, the wraparound. Right on the goo, or at least smite. Goo's still in trouble, though. And Jenkins will take away some of the little raptors. That was very rude, Jenkins. <laughs> like I said, he's got that dog in him. He's, he's already looking for ways to find something. He gets a little bit of experience. I don't actually know if that's enough to get uh, level one off the first wave, but he also gives up at least... Yeah, he gives up all the melee minions. If he wow. gets the kill, 100% worth. But now Jenkins has just got to play for this fight. Yeah, I mean... What can we say? That that dog. <laughs> he just dog. walks right up into the wave and starts smacking Lunasia. Okay, poor one out for Lunasia, by the way. Rookie coming into the league, and he's got to learn. There are, I, I guarantee you, Lunasia does not know this matchup, right? you got to <laughs> learn it on the fly on stage. This is uh, oh, he gets crazy. Level two. Jenkins still is level two first. 
Yeah, that's wild. I was expecting Lunasia to try and push for level 2, but I mean, Jenkins, the level 1 is just that strong that he has to back up anyway. And remember, if he just kind of goes even, it's going to be a good time for the Warwick. But now, Goo, super low HP, Kevy trying to punish. Kevy just blind jump, Arctic Assault over. Oh, I think, honestly, I would have loved it. You had oh, the horde. Oh, 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 he doesn't land the Arctic Assault, but he can still go for the 1v1, has the red buff. But Goo, nicely oh. played. Sword, meanwhile, not winning out the trades early against Meech and Breezy. And now Kevy, oh, he's got to get through Blaze. Blaze on the early game. Azir might have the damage, but Copy can get first blood. It's traded right on back. One for one. But Copy coming out just slightly ahead. Yeah, Copy getting the first blood there. And now we're going to be looking for opportunities to try and fight Blaze while they do have the extra. Uh, energy coming through from the blue buff. I mean, that's one of the big limiters of how strong Akali can be early on in the game, and now you have all the energy to make up for what feels like a crazy long cooldown. But now, look at this. Goo walking towards the top side of the map, and they went for something in the bottom side, and now they're instantly going top. They could actually go for the gank. Goo is the one jungler where I think the answer might be yes. Yeah, skipping Crux. Yeah, just going right for it. As uh, Copy tries to go for the one going on to Blaze. Jenkins with no ghost has the Kevin. barrier. Will have to fight his way out. But Kevy now, never mind. Actually, had the same idea. Arctic Assault's on to Goo. He's got two separate 1v1s going on right now. But Jenkins slightly losing his. He's holding the barrier to the last second. Trying to bait Lunasia in. Lunasia doesn't take the bait. Jenkins really was playing some mind games right there. Yeah. Oh man, such a brutal position to be in as Lunasia, right? Like, maybe he could have gotten the kill, especially if he holds the empowered stun to break the barrier instantly. True. Like, if he does that, he can get a kill, but going up against somebody like Jenkins, going up as the rookie in this weird matchup, you're not sure what you can and can't do, and now Copy's moving towards the top side to find another one of Goo's monsters in the jungle, and mm. ultimately, this is a lot closer to what I was kind of expecting to be seeing from CLG Challengers into FlyFam in the first game. And the fact that the gold is still even, in fact, a very small lead going over towards the fam, still way better than what we were expecting overall from the series. Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing to me is that the game plan seems, as I might have to get back to that, nah, I don't expect a kill here. The, the whole focus of FlyFam in the games that we've seen so far is Goo heavily ganking the lanes, particularly bot lane. So what is CLG Challenger trying to do right now, but just keep Goo in his jungle, harass him as much as they can from level one, and just make Goo uncomfortable. Now, yeah. ideally, I like that on paper, but like you just said, it's not really doing much. Like, FlyFam are still holding on in gold, and they're not getting put behind. Yeah, I also want to point out something uh, very small that Lunasia just did that is a very instructive moment for anybody who's trying to learn top lane. He sat there and he watched Jenkins complete his back, right? Because if Jenkins fakes the back and Lunasia starts pushing immediately, Jenkins will be able to catch the wave. But if you wait and see them back, they're not going to be able to actually catch it on their way back. And that's one of the punishing things about this idea that Jenkins is going for, he doesn't have teleport, he cannot catch that. And so one of those small things that you want to do in your own games, you want to make sure that they've backed before you commit to actually pushing and just small mechanics that we're like to see the rookies actually go for. Good call. I like that look. Especially when you're uncomfortable with the matchup, but discomfort doesn't seem to be doing much. Is Lunasia doing just fine, even went for the coaling. Or the rather the coal uh item. <laughs> he's Lucian? Got. Yeah he's Lucian. He's Lunasia, not Lucian. Lushania. No, yeah, there's a lot of sh <laughs> the, As a play-by-play, -play, I try to avoid those when I can. Oh, Jenkins. Level up the speech. Jenkins level in the 1v1 right now, but Lunasia has the level 6. Now he's got it with the barrier. Oh, no, oh. Lunasia with the 1v1 kill. Oh my gosh, he gets the stun at the right time. Sees the barrier instantly crushes it with the stun, has the ult going the entire time, Jenkins overplays his hand, and it's the rookie fighting fake out to a standstill yesterday and taking down Jenkins in a solo kill in lane. And this is massive because Jenkins doesn't have the teleport, so he doesn't catch any of that wave. 13 CS advantage to Lanasia on top of the kill. 
This is gonna get harder for Jenkins at this point. Like, I, I mean, I, maybe I'm just completely misreading the magic, no. but I imagine that you're not really gonna come back from this. If you can beat Warwick in the first couple of levels and find an advantage basically ever, you're in a huge win. But I think the big thing here is Jenkins was not expecting the level 6 coming up mm. from Lunasia here, right? That's the big difference. If Lunasia doesn't have that ultimate, you see immediately Jenkins starts hitting the minions in order to try and get his own level 6. He is a single minion away but doesn't have time to actually throw out his ultimate. That could have been the difference maker. That would have healed him up to almost half HP instantly, but he doesn't have time to do it. Very, very close play. But Lunasi coming out ahead is good news for FlyFam. Meanwhile, their bot lane seems to be struggling a little bit here as we're back to live. Kevy goes for another invade. Goo just cannot keep hold of these buffs. And Sword, low on mana, low on health, instinct as well. This could be a die oh. follow-up after. Interesting. I mean, that is a heal coming out of Breezy, but Kevy coming around. He's not spotted yet. Oh, yeah, no! Right on the sword. Stops the back. Gets Flash. Still enough damage for the kill. Not quite. Heavy? Now Kevy actually in trouble. Instinct hits level 6. He's going forward. Oh, Kevy overplayed his hand as well. The name of the game for CLG players in this game, too. Oh, it was almost good, but just not quite. That was so close. And again, here's Jenkins. He has an ultimate. He has it, goes forward, but Lunasia just tanks the entire thing to the face. Jenkins pops Ghost and runs away. Yeah, the top lane is going to get worse, and oh no, Flyfam. Yeah, Breezy in trouble now. Goo finally gets a gank off, says, all right, well, if I don't have any camps, I'll just try and impact the rest of the map. But Copy had the same game plan, teleported into the bottom lane, uh, jumps over the Azir wall, but oh, Blaze still had the range to pick one up onto Breezy. Nicely done from the Azir pilot, as now he's slow in copy as well. Has instinct coming in here. Copy should get out just fine, but heads up play. One for one trade in the bot lane. And suddenly, we only have one real hero that we can look at for CLG in their time of need. We can offer them a copy in this trying time. Two kills <laughs> already stacked up. Oh, you know, a wave. This is the one character that if you get it into the back lane, if you get the Akali on top of Instinct and Sword, can actually kill them. That's the one player that we really have to be watching because top lane is going to get worse before it really ever gets better. This bottom lane is starting to fall behind a little bit despite the fact that it has one of the most dominant lanes in the game. Yet again, Instinct and Sword have fought them to a standstill. And it looks like Meech is going for the same build as last time. So if Goo and Lunasia get a lot of armor built up, it will be hard for Meech to actually take them down, get through yeah. that if he's got that collector. So with another dragon spawning in less than a minute, FlyQuest, they can afford to give this one up because they have such a strong range advantage. There's a fight going in the mid lane, but this one, oh, this is the second part of the fight after they already come through. Mm. Copy had already left. And he's forced to teleport back into the bottom lane. Actually, pretty funny that he backs away, teleports back. But here, it's honestly just another moment of a lot of the CLG players feeling like they aren't necessarily giving enough respect to the Fly Fan players. Like, look at that. Breezy just Ooh. walks up, gets poked twice by the Sand Soldier, and disappears off the map. They're not giving enough credit to these provisional players. Maybe they're so focused on telling themselves that, hey, we're supposed to be the favorites, that they forget that these are still good players. Like, they deserve yeah. to be in the Challengers League. Blaze really stepping up here as well. 2-0 and on the Azir. One of the cooler plays that we've seen from him saying, oh, well, Breezy walks up. I'm not going to get distracted by me. Choose the damage dealer. I'll just take the free kill that. right there. <sighs> oh... That's yeah. good. The freeze. The freeze oh, coming through from Lunasia. Uh, Jenkins doesn't get a bar. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what, what, are we, what are we ooing about? Oh, right. Yeah, Joshi saw somebody do something cool in the top lane. Meanwhile, Jane CC on to Breezy in the bot lane. And unfortunately, Ultra. they cannot get the kill. But now, oh, Jenkins. Another one. Infinite Duress heals him back up to half health. And now Lunasia oh. actually went flashing away. Who can drain tank whom? Jenkins was winning that one. Lunasia limps back to turret. Very close, but you can see how much healing can come out if Jenkins can use the barrier and the ult basically healed up to half HP. The Rift Herald goes down in the bottom lane. We're seeing a potential fight, but Copy's got first move from the mid lane. Scary to walk into a Heimerdinger, though. The turrets are set up with Copy on first rotation above Blaze. That means CLG do bully FlyFam off, and they will claim the dragon. 
Kevy, again, you know, doing a lot of small things right. Picking up the dragon, gets two plates off of the bot lane turret that go entirely to the jungle. Suddenly we have another potential hero, despite the fact that they are 0 and 2, because they just got a whole kill's worth of gold off the bottom side of the map, keeping the game relatively even. And now Meech and Breezy might have an avenue to push for first turret, getting them even more gold. Lunasia was the initial member I was looking at, thinking, okay, well, topside, if they can control that, they could probably get first turret cracked open. Now it could be a race. It's still pretty dead, even though Joshi, 12 and a half minutes. Gold, there's no advantage Ooh. either side right now. Even the dragons are tied. Yeah, I saw, I saw something. All I saw was, y'all thought Jenkins. Ah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Hopefully, okay. <laughs> uh, production, I know it's a big ask, and you said you might not be able to do it, but if you can put the picture that I guarantee yeah, he put I with that tweet. Yeah, I promise there's a picture with that tweet. I promise there's a picture. I would absolutely be your best friend forever. Dang. <laughs> We're getting from <laughs> just, just, just a quiet nope. Joshi, come on. Yeah, you, can't, <sighs> you can't ask too much here. All right, but all right. we know. Go check out the we tweet, because you know that there's going to be a photo attached to that one. But either way, Alg Battery is right. Does Jenkins... Got that dog in him. He's going for the Blade of the Rune King. <laughs> Once he got that, Infinite Dress does apply the on-hit for each True. one, and that's a big power spike for the uh, the Warwick. Yeah. And it's also worth noting that Warwick builds in the top lane oftentimes skip out on Mythic, so oftentimes build it second, third, or sometimes even fourth. Uh, Iceborne Ooh. Gauntlet uh, is another thing that you oftentimes are looking for, but Meech got He's nowhere to run. He's dead here. Yeah. There's no way you're escaping this one. It's just how much damage can you do before you go down? Huh. And the answer is not enough. Sword picks that one up and fl well, that flash was necessary, uh. but you know what? Hey, you got out of there. And you it was emphatic. I don't even need this. You show it afterwards. You do it right in front of the turret to make sure that they know that didn't you know, even need to use it. Some players drop emotes. Some players drop some of their thoughts. <laughs> you know, it's w which one's more chat? I think we all know the answer. <laughs> We all know. That's going to be another couple of plays getting picked up by the Fly Fam. They are still ahead. Now Kevin looking for the cross map play. This dive is not the easiest thing in the world, but they do have a ton of melee autos in order to get the stun off quickly. They also both have their ultimates available. Oh, and Smite, Lunasia is all alone. And again, same question. Not a matter if, but when and who. And it is Copy that picks up that kill. It is Copy and Jenkins. I love the long range dog. Just goes in, make sure that you get the uh, suppression because it does get longer the uh, faster your movement speed is. So good stuff coming yeah. out from CLG, making sure they keep the game well within expected parameters. But the big question I'm going to have is when do CLG actually feel strong enough to try and make some of these fights? Because it's not just about how strong they feel, but how they can get towards the back line. You don't have the Hextech portals that Jenkins was relying on so much to kind of split up FlyFam last time. You got to do it the old-fashioned way. Now the danger of walking into brushes against the Heimerdinger Maokai. Meech and Breezy have to give up their turret bot side. There we go. First turret claimed. It was not either of the turrets I was expecting. Top, top blue side or bottom red side. It was bottom blue side. The Fly Fam are feeling good about that with their Lethality Varus. Back in picking up the completed Yomus and even a Dirk Caulfield's on top of it. Uh, lots of good stuff coming out from Instinct, right? Again, we said that there's a situation where they can play this one for advantage, but it shouldn't have been this large of an advantage. We saw almost a thousand gold for Instinct over Meech so far. Honestly, we were saying that this was going to be one of our better provisional bottom lanes, and I definitely feel as though they have been showing up in that regard. Now, we get to see how will they actually position, because even though Instinct and Sword aren't going to be necessarily the consistent DPS throughout a lot of these team fights, if they can get a lot of damage done before the fights start, their effect will be felt anyway. We have a new uh, map placement here to cover as Harold is up, dragon spawning soon, so I want to bring our attention to that one. It's Blaze in the top lane, it's Instinct and Sword now in the mid lane, and the top laners are on the bottom half of the map. Kevy starting up yeah. the Herald though, on his own. This has been the Kevy special, right? CLG feel as though they are comfortable moving around the rest of the map as Meech just goes with culling. He gets the Chain of Corruption out of Instinct as well. So ult for ult. 1v1 in the bottom lane yet again. Jenkins and Lunasia for your entertainment. Heal. Jenkins going for it again. Oh, he was close. I thought he had it, but Lunasia does get away. And now Goo punishing Jenkins, who does not have the turret to fall back on. Even Sword is here. So Jenkins says, all right, well, I guess I got to go for this one again. <laughs> and unfortunately, it is not meant to be Lunasia.
Making up the kill with the help of his support in jungle yeah. there. Jenkins has been doing a really good job. This lane is definitely one where you can kind of out attrition and out wave push as the Renekton, but Jenkins has been doing a good job finding these all-in situations and convincing Lunasia that Lunasia is actually stronger, but Jenkins is not able to finish off the kill and fly fam faster to actually showcase that they are a family. That's all you need as I start losing this turn on the top side. If there's one thing I've learned from Fast and Furious, it's that that's all you need, baby. That's all you need. And that gets him a gold lead we have for family. now, although they just lose it, as I say it, as the turret does go down. CLG committing heavily with the Herald in the top lane, pushing onto two turrets. And they're funneling gold into Copy, the member, the newest member added to this roster, coming in from Cloud9 Academy last year. He's got to put in a pretty solid performance. See what they are actually able to do, right? I mean, Johan Copy is one of these players that continues to showcase different forms that they can play. When they were first playing in 100 Thieves Next, we mostly knew them as like set Galio, very supportive style mid lane play, partly because he was surrounded by a lot of players that uh, he was just trying to make sure could do everything that they needed to. But as he started playing for Cloud9 a little bit more, even with all the veterans there, he wanted to showcase that he could play not just a supportive style mid lane, but also as a carry in his own right. It's where the famous Trindamir 3 turret dive uh, came from. <laughs> yep. Now, he's on the Akali, he's showcasing that once again, he's still very comfortable on a lot of these carries, and a 3-0 start means that even if he's not able to carry this one, it's going to be a good performance anyway. Jenkins, he wanted the turret. Thought uh, maybe if I focus that, I can take it down, but Lunasia heavily chunks him out. Infinite Duress will heal him right on back, and Kevi misses the Glacial Prison. Teleport coming in now. Kevi's got to get out of there. Lunasia pops Dominus. How hard do they want to go? Blaze with the Flash. He's got the Shuffle. Doesn't want to get feared by Jenkins, though. They don't commit to the trigger pull. It's surprising to me, but they see that multiple members of CLG are on their way down. I'm pretty sure that if they committed, they would end up both dying, but maybe they could go for a 2 for 2 instead. Going to be trading out a little bit of damage here in the mid lane, and ultimately nothing really happens. So look at that, Jenkins. Is he chasing Lunasia? No. The Renekton does just hop over the wall and is able to keep himself safe. I think that's a big win for CLG, actually. They get the teleport out of Blaze. That's uh, on cooldown for the Azir, although I guess maybe not that punishing as Dragon will be up, up for another three minutes. It won't quite be up for this next Dragon, so there is a small window where it might matter, but, it, you know... It is always these wins with the cooldowns is you need to get something out of it. It's not enough to just say, oh, we have the cooldown, we were waiting. I, I think we know what they're going to try and get out of it. <laughs> they're just going to repeat the same play onto Lunasia. In 1v1 by Kevi, won't go mm -hmm. down, but it pushes the Renekton off of the wave, which means Jenkins can get a turret. At the same time, Copy's still up in the top lane, creating pressure there, pushing waves towards Blaze, and that's something we didn't really look at last game, but Copy was up nearly 100 CS on Blaze for a good chunk of it. And now, hasn't quite built up the same kind of lead just quite yet, but we are starting to see the fact that Jenkins just understands this matchup so much better, right? Like, when you pull out all these cheese picks, all these weird things that people aren't quite expecting, you're going to be able to pilot them in ways that your opponents don't really know how to play against them. And so Jenkins has recouped all of the CS that he lost early in the game. And even though he's down 0-2, if we can take a look at the gold, if observers could pull that up, I reckon he's not, like, that far behind, which is pretty surprising. I had made the statement earlier that I thought after the first solo kill from Lunasia that he would win the side lane, but... It really hasn't been the state of the game so far, so Jenkins piloting this Warwick to great effect. Yeah. But still, again, I want to give praise particularly to Lunasia and Goo for the way that they have been playing this series. Lunasia, again, playing up against Jenkins and Fake God, doing a good job, and Goo being instrumental in nearly winning the first game. But now, the situation where Instinct and Sword are also trying to create a bit more space, and the amount of poke that they put out has been making Breeze and Meech definitely a bit more uncomfortable, because look at the amount of control they have in the mid lane, and how they're starting to build up a lot more control around the dragon, throwing down these saplings in order to allow them to be everywhere first, where they can leverage their increased range advantage. One of the biggest things about these neutral objective setups, especially with these kinds of comps, is getting there first, making it hard for the opponent to walk in. And I love that from FlyFam with the Heimerdinger, with the Maokai, like, look at everything CLG's got to go through. If he's just going to kind of walk in from the mid lane, that's the safest approach right now that they have. But they still have 30 seconds. 
to decide how they want to go for this dragon as copy really wants to shove this top wave in get blaze to go up there because he still does not have that teleport yeah you can't afford to give up this dragon and clg potentially but you can't afford to give up the one after that and johan doesn't want to give up either of them as he starts moving down immediately this is an opportunity right one of the things that we were saying in finding the old-fashioned flanks is you just needed to go around and create space but i don't even know how coffee would get up towards FlyQuest blue buff right that's where you would normally be expecting them to find these flanks in order to split up the fight and they haven't taken that mid turret yet so we can't just walk through there and actually, he's going to be caught out here. Or rather, caught away from the rest of the team. Lunasi mm. teleports in, as he's the one that cat caught the top lane. Top wave. Dragon started. <laughs> the PLG challengers are approaching. <laughs> it's just so annoying to play into the high oh. turn. So you get hit by one, you're slowed. Now Copy, he's spotted by Lunasia in the flank. Oh, there it is. There's the go button. Nasia, big engage from Breezy coming in. A copy gets on the goo. Meech claims the kill as Jenkins 1v3 pushes away Blaze, Instinct, and Sword. Nasia trying to reposition. Double kill for Meech. That's a two for zero. Blaze thought about going in for the shuffle. Said, nope, I'm out of there. We will give up this dragon. We have lost the fight. And Copy doing a great job playing touch and go with Lunasia on the far side. Oh, Lunasia, I don't know if he realizes. I don't, yeah. He, he didn't yeah. realize that Copy was in that brush. He didn't walk in to check it. Although, also doesn't have magic resist other than the Merc Tread. So maybe was scared just getting one shot by the two item at level 15 Akali. But regardless, CLG, they get their dragon. Yeah, the Mountain Dragon, and they're getting some good damage on the mid lane turret. I mean, things seem to be going well, but watch how Copy plays this, and they coordinate the flank at the same time as the engage from the other side. That is the mark of a team that is communicating, right? Kevy throws out the ultimate, and immediately Copy jumps in, and there's so much confusion. And you can see, Flyquests are trying to reform their battle lines, but Goo, the only person on that side, you don't have Lunasius Renekton to hold back the onslaught of CLG challengers, and it means that CLG have pulled off a fantastic flank, giving Meech this double kill. Yeah, Blaze, I thought maybe would have gone for the crazy shuffle there, push them as close to the turret as possible. Even if you do, though, I don't know if you get the kills. <laughs> I you probably don't survive afterwards. Nah. So understandable that they would want to back off instead. Big plays from CLG Challenger now up 3,000 gold. They've evened up the dragons. And now it's about controlling the Baron. The same thing that we were saying before. If Maokai and Heimerdinger have set up first at an objective, it's a nightmare to get there. But if CLG can prevent them from getting into this side True. of their jungle, they have a lot of control. And that's why they're taking control of all this vision here around the red buff, making sure that it is difficult for them to walk over. Doing a good job as far as you're seeing things like the grenades just being used to test out. But it, it's so difficult now for them to walk in because they've given up so much control. And I think the only thing really preventing CLG from starting this Baron is the fact that this mid turret is still up. As long as the turret is still there, people can stand yeah. around. Okay, Instinct. Huh. Uh, no one saw that. Ooh. Oh. That's rough. I think we did see that one actually as yes, now. Okay, Breezy has to flash away too. Copy. And there's a lot of ultimates down, so Copy's got a lot of room to work with nice. now. Meech gifted another kill. Got that dog. The rest the Lunasia. That dog is in there. As two kills picked up for CLG Challenger. Right as Baron's on the table. That should be their objective. And a mistake from Instinct throwing out the chain of corruption and then not having it for the fight immediately after. It means that CLG not only find two kills, but they're also going to find this Baron. Goo's not there to steal. And Sword, he can't oh. walk up there, buddy. Oh, copy! Give him something, man! This is just disgusting! Okay, does he take it? Uh, no, nah, Instinct's got nah, a lot of damage. Nah. Copy's quite low. But hey, he bought the space that they needed. That Baron belongs to CLG Challenger. Yeah, and if there's anything I've learned from uh, playing Nara, hold on, Jenkins going through. He's so fast. Yeah, doesn't have the ghost, but oh! Okay, I guess Meech has some damage, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He's definitely got the damage this time around, and the Collector means a whole lot more when you can actually hit these soft targets instead of being forced to hit the uh, the Maokai and the Renekton. CLG, mm. the game was looking pretty even there now, definitively in the lead. They got two and a half minutes left on the Baron. They should be picking up this mid lane outer and probably both inner turrets off of that, and that should be a gold lead that FlyFam will not be able to deal with. Strong start for CLG Challenger as it looks like this could be the final touches in their weekend. Oh no. Finishing off with a 4-0. Now they catch out Instincts. Ooh, yeah, let the dogs out. Ooh. Ooh. 
ho, ho, ho. Oh, that, that, it was, it was instinct. It was instinct. Instinct. <laughs> well, he let the dogs in, I think. Uh, into the river where he was, unfortunately, which is not, no, not, not a, really an environment that a, a, an archer is supposed to fight dogs. No, 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 no. It's, it's, uh, if I've learned anything from I watched a YouTube you video about sure. archery. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they have dogs in there as goo is getting caught out. Okay, flashes the wall. Copies just saying, I don't care about your turret. I'm trying to get the kill. Doesn't quite have the damage, but it was close. And now, okay. Okay, they're having fun at this point. Like, this is what happens when Meech goes for this build and is ahead. So, yes. uh, I, I don't remember who had the the based take Is Maniac earlier. Oaks? Yeah. Oh, it was Maniac yeah. Oaks. I wonder, I wonder how they feel about it this time. Eh. It's one of those things where collector win ahead means that you win a whole lot. Collector win behind means that you lose a whole lot, right? It's just that kind of item. And now Mage throwing down the coaling, clearing out the wave. You can see that th we said that they were going to get three turrets. They're threatening to get four, five, maybe even six of Jenkins to top of the top one. They have double cannons right now. It's a smite from Goo to take one out. Trying to keep these turrets alive if possible. Fly fam are not working with much, though. 10,000 in the hole as Jenkins, ooh, doesn't even take turret as Blaze uses the Emperor's Divide. So this could be double supers in every wave, if not just the game. CLG Challenger, they could look to end right now. If they have that dog oh. in a meat, definitely does. Now Sword in trouble, locked down. Lunasia bubbled, knocked up. Blaze trying to buy the space, Ooh. trying to get that damage down. But look at all these cannons. The Baron Power Cannons are doing so much damage. Sword is down, and Flyfam, a valiant effort in their week one against SIP opponents. But CLG Challenger will end their week one of the season undefeated. A 4-0 week for the CLG fans coming through. And so hopefully we'll get to see even more of these guys. We were saying at the beginning of the day that this was a team that we are expecting to be towards the top of the table come the end of the season. These are a bunch of players that should be looking to win all of the Challengers League. They were able to take both games today, and I think it's still an opportunity for them to say, hey, even though it wasn't our cleanest set of games, we showcased mm -hmm. some cool things that we can do, and we also showed that you cannot ban out our top laner. He's only playing things that you would never expect him to. They just, uh, they did such a good job of playing the map more so than we've seen a lot of the teams so far. It's very early in the season. It makes sense. They're the team with the most returning members on the same roster. So they already have a lot of the fundamentals built from last year that they're bringing into this year. And Copy is sliding right into what this team wants to do so beautifully. Like, we can't talk up Copy enough. A player we have felt could make the jump to LCS any day now. And now on this roster is looking real clean. Yeah. Big fan of copy of what we've been saying, and also hello to everybody coming in from Europe. If you're just yeah. tuning in, we have the LCS on Thursdays, Fridays now. Welcome to the Challengers League. I am Joshua Joshi Howard, and I'm joined by Steve Kangas Kangas. Just one Kangas, Joshi. Come on. Maybe we can well, add a third one. <laughs> we're moving past that. You have to have the name in between the names. You can just go by K. It's, it's right down there. Nah. But either way, thank you for joining <laughs> in. Hopefully you're enjoying the show so far. We just saw CLG Challenger pick up a 4-0 weekend, taking a 2-0 uh, against their opponents today. It was against two provisional teams. So these are the teams that are not necessarily you know associated directly with the LCS orgs, or even if they are, they do face relegations at the end of the season. This was kind of expected from CLG Challenger. Uh, in, in a way, we went into this saying, yeah, they should be favorites in both of these matches. Yeah. And they were absolutely dominant yesterday. Today, Flyfan put up a much bigger fight than we were expecting, but hey, CLG still able to clutch it out. Kevy having some big moments. Copy having a bunch of big moments. And Meech and Breezy mm -hmm. really coming back from their rough game one order to dominate some of the fights in game two. And Ch Jenkins gave us... Ghost Barrier Warwick Topley. I mean, come on. You can't ask him. He's got that dog. He's got that dog in him, baby. Uh, final thoughts, though, from FlyFam. I, I want to give a little bit more props to them because, of course, it's a rough start, but they had a lot of bright spots. So, Joshi, wh what are you walking away from the first weekend? What's the temperature check of FlyFam? The big thing, this team is looking better than I was expecting. I think it's a little bit rough that their first two opponents were some of the strong teams in the league, right? Going up against Cloud9 Challengers and CLG Challengers. But Lunasia, way better than I think anybody was really yeah. expecting. Goo, we already knew this guy was going to be hyped coming into the season. Already showcasing that they can be a force for good on the team. And as long as the mid lane and the bottom lane can hold up against some of these strong laners like we've seen, that is definitely going to be a recipe for success against a lot of the rest of the teams. 
We're going to be uh, watching FlyFam very closely to see how they develop throughout the split. But congrats to CLG Challenger for picking up the win. We're going to send it to a short break before we're back with a member from CLG Challenger for an interview after this. And we're back, everybody, with our post-series interview with the one and only CLG Challenger, Breezy, for his first interview of the year with us. Thanks for coming on, Breezy. Happy to have you. Thank you, thank you. Glad to be here. I can tell that uh, you got some support behind you, so I'm happy that we get to see their reactions as Coach <laughs> yeah. Juice and Tokla will be joining us here. A 4-0 start to the split. Uh, I got to start. How have the vibes been this weekend? Because uh, it seems like things are looking pretty good for CLG early on. Yeah, vibes are good. Whole scrims are been all, like all good vibes this whole week. Even last week, everything's been good so far. No, uh, only in good times. Well, I, I think part of that might be because you're relatively the same roster coming back in. You have the least yeah. changes. You've only changed copy in the mid lane. What's it been like kind of incorporating him into the CLG fam? Uh, it's been really easy. Copy's like, he has a really good understanding of the game. He's probably like the best academy mid laner, so it was nice having him come, and he's just adapting very well, and then pretty easy to fit him into the system. What's uh, what, what has he brought to the team so far? I mean, I know it's still early on. It's only been one weekend, but like, have you noticed any big changes or big uh, additions? I mean, besides winning lane every single game, he's a uh, good. Uh, <laughs> he's good in uh, comms, and he's uh, becoming a leader. That's good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, real quick, um, can you tell Coach Juves that he's got to go grab some sunglasses because I'm seeing I'm seeing a, a kind of disconnect right now. <laughs> Can you communicate yeah, that to him real quick? Uh, they said you have to go get some sunglasses, Juves. You're not like a real bodyguard. There's some disconnect. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> even excited. Right? Yeah, All right, if he comes back with sunglasses, we'll allow him to stay. Uh, I want to talk about the uh, the draft phase for game two. Jenkins sure. pulled out the Warwick. <laughs> yeah, Jenkins uh, Warwick. For, first of all, uh, can you confirm, does he have that dog in him? He does have that dog in him. I think he was inspired by like some Korean war Warwick one trick when we were in Korea. Actually, Jenkins was there for like two months. And he got like 1100 LP. I think he was the highest rank NA player in Korea. And then he was inspired by some Warwick one trick there. And he's now becoming one with the Warwick. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Hopefully we can see more of that. Second of all, what, what were the comms like during pick and ban? Uh, who decided that Warwick was appropriate? And uh, do we blame Jeeves? I mean, it, was, it just was just like an angle for Tom or for Jenkins. He just saw the angle and he wanted it, and we're like, we trust him, and then he just went for it. Will he be issuing a public apology to Lunasia for their <laughs> first rookie split weekend, having to play against Warwick Top? I will inform him that he may have to do so. All right, I'll be, I'll be checking Twitter later on. Yeah. Uh, now, obviously, the, the, from our side, on the broadcast mm -hmm. side, we've been very excited about CLG Challenger just because you, you had a very solid performance in the summer, bringing back a lot of the same roster. Um, expectations are pretty high for this team, if we're being honest. Have you been feeling uh, that at all on your side, uh, or are you just focused on the game? Oh, yeah, I mean, we're pretty focused on the game, but we also have pretty high expectations within ourselves. I think all of us, like, coming off last year, we didn't like have a great showing in proving grounds, but we've leveled a lot up a lot in off season, and we're, I think we're all excited to like show how much we've progressed, and we have really high expectations. Okay, I like it. Uh, yeah. We're gonna play a little bit of a game here uh, to close sure. things off because sure. you know we like to have fun on the broadcast. I'm sure you've been watching. Uh, you, you should know by now. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're gonna do a something called a salt meter. All right, because we are okay. the NACL league, aka <laughs> the Salt League. Uh, okay. So I got a couple of questions prepared for you. Number okay. one, mm -hmm. Heimerdinger support. You had to play against it. Mm -hmm. How salty were you against the Heimerdinger support on a scale of one uh, to five salts? A one Here, salt. I can, I can not, demonstrate. Not, not salty. One, Zero salt. One salt. We yes. only have one salt out of five <laughs> potential salts. One, one Wh salt. Can you defend Heimerdinger support for me? Because I've been defending Heimerdinger support and people have been trashing nah, me for it. So nah. why are you not salty about Heimerdinger? No, I mean, I think Heimerdinger is a good champ, but there's certain angles for it, but I don't think this was the angle for it. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. How salty is the run back? Because, uh, of course, you have four of five returning members. How salty huh. would you rate the CLG run back from season uh, 2022 to 2023? One to five. Um, I don't know what we're being salty about, but I'll say five. Because it feels like people might be underrating us a bit. But we're ready to oh, show that we're in the best. Five salt. I thought you were going to say yeah. four out of five. I thought no, that was the salt. obvious answer because four <laughs> members were returning. But five salt. I five five did five that's, a, yeah, that's, a good, that's a good point. <laughs> well, hey, you got Jeeves coming back too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, 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 the, the the true one. How salty do you think Jeeves is that I kicked him off the interview? For oh, probably league? like probably like six salt. Like I'm breaking six the salt, breaking, okay. <laughs> breaking the meter. Yeah. Here, let, let me let me add another salt. We'll we'll yeah, just add one salt. down here. Oh, you can like uh, take, you can take it out of like other salt and put it on that one. 
Okay. Oh, oh, it yeah. could be like salt sprinkling out of the salt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, let's let's do that like down there. All right, now it's getting a little scuffed, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, well, that's six out of five salts for Jubes. Uh, any final statements from your, your bodyguards? Uh, are you going like anywhere special after this? I don't know. Like, where, what's the security reason for Um, I hope they're just like taking me to a nice dinner, maybe like protecting the limo for me. We'll see what's up. Okay, we should have a conversation because they can't hear me, right? Yeah, they can't hear you. Oh, we could say anything about them, and they would have no idea that we're talking about Dokla and Andy. What's the most embarrassing thing you've ever seen Andy do? Your, your manager <laughs> behind you. Um, maybe for his sake, I won't say. But Dokla, there's probably a lot of things. Okay, what's the most embarrassing thing that Dokla's done? <laughs> there we go. What is the most embarrassing thing? I mean, Dokla probably gets really upset when he gets still killed by Academy <laughs> Top. Still killed by Academy Top player, so that's probably what it is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, 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 I didn't get a big reaction out of Dokla. I thought you were going to go more incognito than that, but he definitely knows uh, we're talking about him now. Yeah, so we're going to get out of here. Thank you, Breezy, for coming <laughs> out and chatting with us. Congratulations on the undefeated yeah, weekend, and we'll yeah. see you next week. Thank you, Sia. And with that said, we're going to send it to a short break before we're back with our next series.